let's make this happen. Let's hit it. Everybody, it's Tuesday, May 28th. It's the day after Memorial Day, and we're on our way to Walgreens. And we're using, uh, we got the offer from DoorDash. I'll tell you what we're going to be getting in a second. As soon as I can pull it up, we're getting $17.40 for uh, 9.4 miles. And we're going to be shopping for seven items. All right, let's get down there. Well, I checked on, on my doggie this morning, and she's doing just great. <laughs> she is doing just fine. There's no problems. I'm so happy about it. You know, we all thought that she had a, a tumor, but she didn't have a tumor. It was just inflammation. And so we're still all celebrating uh, from the news that we got uh, yesterday about it. So everyone's just really happy in the house and uh, really relieved mostly. We're just like, oh, thank goodness. We don't have to worry about that stress because there was like the the surgery and recovery and the treatments and who knows how long it was going to go on. So I'm just so happy that's in the past and we can just move on and we get back to our normal routine of, you know, driving in the car and enjoying everything at home. There's a bug on my window. Enjoy stuff at home and, you know, just that low stress. Back to the normal stress, you know, the regular stress of life. <laughs> no extra, no extra horrible things that are going on. So we're very relieved about that because that could have been a disaster, you know. I don't know what it is about little dogs. Little dogs are much more traumatic than bigger dogs. I mean, of course I'm worried. I mean, I had bigger dogs. I had dogs that were like 75 pounds and I think the other one was 90 pounds or something like that. They were big dogs. But I think when you have a big dog, they seem grown up and... When you have little dogs, they always, in your mind, you think they're just babies. They're little tiny puppies. So it's a psychological thing, obviously, because they're all animals. But it's, for some reason, it's more intense. Like when I had my, when, I, when my cats passed away, it was easier for me for two of the cats to go. I mean, they're all difficult when they, ha when they passed away. But the bigger ones were not as, not as difficult to um, deal with as the littlest one. The littlest one always looked like a kitten. And when she finally got real frail and it was time to, to take her to the vet to, to put her down because she had turned into a skeleton, oh, it was awful. It was like, uh, okay, now you have to put this cute little kitten that always looked like a kitten down and it was so, it's just so much harder. And I can't, I can't tell you why. It has something, it, obviously it has something to do with instinctually, uh, as, as humans, we consider youth to be uh, very precious. And when you're older, when you look older, people just are much more psychologically ready to let go. It's like while you look, your appearance shows that your time is coming and that you've lived a full life and it's all psychological to the viewer from the outside of course we all feel young on the inside we're the same on the inside everything is the same on the inside but on the outside we 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 who are observing from the outside we are experiencing it and so our minds make justifications for why this living thing is passing away you can be like wow well, they've let you can tell looking at them that they're very old so you can, you, I don't know, it's a mental thing. It must be psychological or instinctual. I don't know which, probably both. Every time I go to this Walgreens, it wants me to take the long way around. I mean, it must be shorter by a minute if I were to go the long way. And, and by long, I mean it, get, it puts on an extra mile and a quarter to the drive. And, uh, and then this way, you know, I save those miles. So I always get off at this particular exit. And I don't know if, th maybe that affects my untimeliness. Maybe there's some sort of algorithm because I noticed my, my on-time uh, metric, it consistently so far has always stayed at 95%. And maybe that has to do with, with um, when I drive, I always take the route I know is the shortest distance to a restaurant and sometimes to a house, but mostly to the to the restaurant or the store, 
because I know miles wise, it's going to save me a minimum of a quarter of a mile. And I know that over time, that's a lot of miles. It really will add up. So that's probably why. But I think it shows that that my 95% on time rating is still considered good. It shows green good. And I haven't really done any research to find out like what is considered uh, um, a dangerous level to have for on timeliness. And it's very vague. You know, you read you read in the app what it means and it's like, oh, well, you know, something about we expect you to show up on time to the stores, but we will take into account traffic conditions or whatever. I don't know how they take into account traffic conditions. They're not here. They don't know if there's like a dead body laying in front of the road and I got to stop to move the body out to the curb. <laughs> they don't know anything about that. So, uh, yeah, I'm not exactly sure what that means. Maybe it means like if you get to the point where you need to plead your case, you can tell them situations that occurred recently and maybe that that's how you plead your case so they can be like, oh, okay, we'll let it slide uh, this time. <laughs> maybe that's how they do it. Who knows? Uh, these apps, they're so mysterious. They can, they can get rid of you for any reason. So don't be surprised if one of these days I just tell you guys that I got booted off one of the apps because that's how they are. They, they, you are not an employee of these apps. You are a contractor and you can get rid of contractors for any reason. You don't need, you don't need a reason to give them. You can just do a blanket deletion of thousands or yeah, hundreds of thousands of drivers for any reason, just because they just feel like it. They may just decide at, at a corporate level that they don't want any drivers who have been on the app for so many years because they feel like those are the troublemakers. They're like, get those troublemakers off the app. <laughs> and they wipe you off the board. So who knows? Who knows the different the different rationales that go on behind the scenes? <laughs> We're just the worker bees. We don't know what's going on in the hive. <laughs> Let me put up the... the um, this lady just crossed right in front of me. I was to run her down. Let me put on the the uh, shopping thing so we can see what we're shopping for. We're shopping for a nail brush, some bandages, some shampoo, lotion. It's all bath stuff, cleansing pads. So luckily it's all very similar. It should all be somewhere in the same section. Oh, they just added another item. <laughs> People have a lot of nerve. <laughs> I don't know what it is and I don't want to know. It's locked up. Well, that took a while. That took a while to do. I couldn't find a few things. I couldn't find the band-aids. You would think band-aids would be easy, right? No. They needed a special band-aid for their heel. And they didn't have it. This dumbass Tesla guy. First he blocks me trying to cross the street. Then he parks in the handicap spot and he's obviously not handicapped, has no handicap placard. And now that I need to go, he's backing out of the handicap spot after being there for two seconds. People are crazy. So we're going 10 minutes away, 4.1 miles. So leave at the door and it's a house. I was, um, I was stuck on a lot of things. There was some kind of retinol skin thing that they needed i thought the thing that was going to be the hardest was going to be um the nail brush i was like where are where would a nail brush be and uh i did luck out the last nail brush that they had was uh available and i got it and then there was like this dove body scrub it was the last one available so there were a lot of things that were that it was the last one and I was so lucky to even get it and then um, then of course I couldn't find the, the, the heel thing like, like I guess the person has like a blister not on their heel but you know at the back of the ankle and um, so it's a special kind of, of band-aid that goes there that I guess band-aid makes they didn't have it and I was looking and looking you know they have so many different kinds of band-aids 
so many, like at least 50 different kinds of band-aids are on that shelf, both generic and other name brands. And so I was scanning, scanning and scanning, and I said, this is just taking so long. I said, let me just pretend that I have that problem and what would I get? And I went over to the, the section that's for feet, and they had a thing that goes on that section. It's like a little stick-on that 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 is has padding in it that will protect the blister that you have back there. And that's what I got because that was the closest thing I can find. And uh, and then for the the retinol, that particular thing, I just told them that this is all they have, and I took pictures and I sent it to them. And then they're like, "That's fine." They, they, they just told me which one that they wanted. And I said, okay. And so that was it. So I got everything. Essentially. <laughs> Essentially, I got everything. But uh, I was in there. I mean, the total with 637 right now, AM. So it is already going on 40 minutes since we got this job. So, and how much are we getting for it again? We can't be getting that much money for it. Oh, $17.40. So that's pretty good, I guess. That's That technically gives us 45 minutes. So we're going to be right there, right on the button, I think, for probably getting anywhere from $18 to $20 an hour for this job. So I guess it's fine. And the miles, of course, are just fine. So it's all good. I was just... You know, I was just thinking just from my first morning one, you know, you don't want to have any kind of roadblocks. And there were multiple roadblocks in there that were trying to keep me from being successful with this delivery. And that was annoying. But I mean, why should I be surprised? I mean, every time I go into Walgreens, it's always like that. Either the shelves are bare and there's hardly any, any inventory. Or they just plain just don't have the item that they supposedly said they they had in the store. And that's just typical. Typical of Walgreens. The worst is when they order toys, you know. They order like dolls and games. They never have it. They never have the doll or the game that that the customer wants. And it is just like, well, what am I supposed to do? (laughs) And they don't put any... Sometimes they'll put a substitute, but... The toy selection is so bizarre. Like even the substitute they won't have. It's like they they feel like toys, toys is just a generic term for any old crap that a kid will play with. They throw it on that shelf. And when it just, and when something runs out, they don't care. They just replace it with another random toy that they just find, I guess, somewhere in a box in the back. I don't know. So um, yeah, so toys are the worst. When they, whenever I see toys listed, on the um, shopping list, I just cringe. I'm like, oh no, please, <laughs> please don't do this to me. <laughs> don't make me suffer. <laughs> All right, five more minutes, 2.1 miles. Reading a YouTube article that said I should be making my thumbnails consistent. So, and they said to try to use very minimal color just as little color I mean color obviously they say use colors but not a bunch of colors like keep it down they said to like three colors at the most they said try to make them calming colors Uh, then they said uh, don't make your thumbnail busy they said uh, what else did they say they said again whatever you decide to do do the same thing over and over again they said so that way people can identify your thumbnail right away when they're looking for you and they're like scrolling through their page. So I said, okay, I'm gonna try that. (laughs) I'm gonna try that technique for a while and see if that works out. I know that in traditional branding as a graphic designer, it is true that you're supposed to do that. But for YouTube, I was like, maybe the rules are different. Although the rules for branding have always been the same throughout history. So I suppose, I was like, I, I suppose they're right. I should not think of this I should take this more serious and be like, okay, if this was a business and I was trying to create a brand with my thumbnails, what would I do? So I said, okay, so I'm going to create this particular look, which I'm doing now. If you can see it in the thumbnail now, you'll see I've created a particular type of look with the background. So that's particular kind of look that I'm going for. And then... uh, 
Oh wait, we're in the neighborhood. Hold by the time I get this camera to work right, we'll already be at the house. I'm like goofing around trying to like drive at the same time. Switch the camera so you can see the street. <laughs> it's like amateur hour over here. Oh god, oh well. So anyway, I was saying I was just trying to make the 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 looks consistent. I think I picked something that I liked and I can always adjust the color or the shape, but I think I'm just going to I think I'm going to try my best to stick with this color cuz I like the color. It's very relaxing, very calming. And they said it's good to make a thumbnail that's very calming. They said statistics show that people like calming the things that are calming, not too crazy. So I picked that and then of course now I'm doing selfies. I'm taking pictures of myself so the pictures are more high definition. Although the first round I took of pictures, they were too high definition. It was like I was like the crypt keeper in those pictures. I was like, okay, you're showing people way too much information on my face. <laughs> Nobody wants to see all that mess going on. So I applied a few filters to soften it up. All right, well, we're, we're almost here. Let's see. It's going to be coming up on the left. It's this house here. All right, I'm just going to just turn into their driveway. I think we're gonna be. I think we're gonna be fine turning into the driveway. So okay, that delivery went fine. So I turned on Uber Eats. So we're we're looking. I'm just trying to find out what's the best way to go back home because now I'm not sure. Let's see what it says. Of course, Uber Eats is coming in. Of course. Oh, that's a terrible one. She says, what is she saying? <laughs> what is this lady saying? Oh, man. I bet you I'm going the wrong way. Turn right onto North Valley Verde Drive. Are you sure? Oh, well, I got to trust the navigation. It thumbed it, it made it really small now, the map, so I can't, I can't tell 100% where I'm going. I have to trust it because it's still not changing. So it's saying that this is the fastest way to go to get back home. I got turned around because I was having conversations with you guys and I got lost my sense of direction. Yeah. Oh, well. So, yes, yeah, so I was saying that the thumbnails did not needed to be more consistent so I picked the color and my picture looked terrible at first because it was too high definition it was showing too too much of my 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 natural beauty <laughs> so I had to filter that out some of that natural beauty so it would be a little softer and uh, then I did that and uh, let's see and then they said um, oh and then I wanted to make sure that people always knew Oh, something's coming in. It's another Walgreens. Hold on. Oh, it's only $6.75. And it's from DoorDash. It's a no. Oh, I can turn off the navigation now. Because I know where I'm at now. So, yeah. So, I had to um, uh, add a, a little shop. <coughs> excuse me. Add a, add a little shopping bag. Oh, we're out. Switch back now. I usually like to have it facing outward. So, you guys can see the pretty neighborhood. But now that we're back on the main drag, there's nothing for you to see. So you can't critique the houses since we're on the main main street now. There's no point. So um, what was I saying? <laughs> I was saying, uh-oh, DoorDash, $7.50 for 5.6 miles. That's too low. Declining. Declined. So I was the, uh, the thumbnails. <laughs> What was I saying about the thumbnails? I was telling you, I was just making them look good so that people will click on them. That's pretty much it. I was trying to make good looking thumbnails. That is the that is the gist of the conversation of the topic. I was trying to make the thumbnails look professional and easy for people to understand and they would be easy to find when people are looking for me or if a new person comes across it, it'll be pleasant. They'll see a happy, happy, pleasant face looking at them. And they'll be like, oh, he looks like a nice guy. I'll click on that thumbnail and watch his video. <laughs> and then, of course, I had to put 
they said put some kind of text but not too much text that kind of gives people an idea of what the video is about but not too much information because you don't want to clutter it so i was like oh, okay i can i've been doing that and they said keep using the same font so and i like the font that i'll never change that's consistent and then uh then of course i wanted people to always know it, it's an uber eats doordash or some type of delivery show so i said well I noticed that in a lot of the thumbnails that people make, they seem, they seem to always put not just the logo, but they put actual shopping bags from the company on there. So I'm like, okay, well, I'll try that. So I added the shopping bags of each, of each uh, company onto the uh, thumbnail. And those stand out a lot. I was like, well, those really stand out a lot. So that tells people right away that this is a delivery video. It's about DoorDash and Uber Eats. And I didn't add the, the Walmart Spark one because I don't, I haven't been doing Walmart Spark. Even though I have the app, I'm still not too um, happy doing uh, Walmart Spark. So I don't know if they're going to eventually just kick me off of there because I'm not using it. I don't know what happens. But if it's super slow when I'm at home, I'll turn it on. But I find it difficult to use the spark app when i'm driving because it's just too much information i cannot drive safely and navigate through that menu system to see everything i need to see to make the decision so it's just too much but if i'm just sitting around at home and um you know hanging out at home in my chair then i'll be like okay well let me turn on the the spark app and i can really take the time to make sure it's what i want to take and i'm also I know exactly how far away all the Walmart stores are from my house. So I know right away how to calculate it. Whereas when I'm driving, I don't even know where the heck I'm at half the time. How am I supposed to know how close or how far away I am from the store that they're talking about? So, and a lot of times they say you have to arrive like within 15 minutes of accepting the offer. So uh, that doesn't work out for me because a lot of times the stores even they will send they will send you an offer and the store is not 15 minutes away so you're you're supposed to just know uber eats seven dollars 69 cents 12.5 miles no yeah you're supposed to just know whether or not you're 15 minutes away or else you're going to get penalized you know your stats will go down it'll show that you're not showing up on time so that i don't need that headache <laughs> i said leave that app off we're getting plenty of work right now. And if we weren't getting plenty of work, we would be back at home. And then, they, then I would turn on the Walmart Spark. So at any rate, we've been getting a lot of good work from the, the other apps. And so uh, we have, I have not uh, used Spark enough to warrant putting their uh, Spark logo on my thumbnail. Now, if we do a Spark and something interesting happens that day, or even if it's in the video, I guess I will throw on the Spark a uh, little logo, you know, somewhere on the thumbnail, and then that'll be that. So, uh, so yeah, but it's it's nice to have that feature. I mean, it's nice to have that extra option if things get uh, um, slow. So it's all good. But um, right now, it's just those two apps that I prefer to use. <laughs> so that is that. But um, what else was I gonna say? Oh, it's also hard to to multitask through more than two apps at the same time. Whenever you have three apps going at the same time, it is really hard to juggle. So all the offers that would fly in, you got to toggle. At least when you're doing two, you just tap the phone. You tap the phone twice and you go back and forth between the previous app you had open. So that may, that's a lot easier than dealing with three. Three, you have to basically start sliding. Then you got to slide on an, on an Android, you gotta tap and then slide to find the thumbnail of, of the app that you want. And then you gotta tap it again, and that that's not safe when you're driving because then you gotta actually take your eyes off the road to make sure you're actually sliding to the to the app that you want to get to. So, yeah, I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna just keep two apps running for right now. And uh, you guys are probably gonna notice that my videos are now much more closer to the actual day I've recorded them. I shifted a lot of my videos that have never been seen into members only 
just to make it so that people will see videos that are much more recent. So I think the lag now is going to be, I think it's two or three days. So two to three days, two to three, two to three days from when you're seeing this video is when this was recorded. And you can see in the description, and of course I announced it at the beginning of the video now, since somebody commented that they wanted to know. So you can find it in the description when this was recorded. And it, and if you were seeing it the same day it actually became posted or published, you would know, you would be able to see it is, it is about three days, it's been about three days since this video was recorded. That is the general gist of what I was trying to do. So that way it would make some people, some people really want freshness. So I think that's about as fresh as I can get. I don't know if I can get it to be the following day. I mean, I guess I could. I mean, I could make it the, I could try to make it the following day. Let me know in the comments if you want to see the videos the following day. Uber Eats, $4.22, 3.1 miles, no. Let me know in the comments if you want to see the video the following day. Because all I would really have to do is then shuffle one or two more videos into the members only section. And that would just mean that those particular videos only members would ever see. And then the general public would see those, see those videos or one of those videos if I was ever sick or I had something to do and I needed to post something for that day because I always try to post something every day but let's suppose there was a day where I couldn't work and I needed to just now have a filler video that's not a rerun but it's an older video that nobody in the general public has seen so I think that's what I will do <laughs> I think that's what I will do this thing is like running a business it's like uh it's like you really have to do a lot of strategizing a lot of thinking for so many different things it's, it's a good thing they pay. It's a good thing they pay money because I would never do this for free. Let me tell you, it's a lot of work. It takes a lot of time. And of course, I'm losing money by doing these videos. $8.09 for, what does it say? 5.6 miles, but it's two deliveries. Oh, no, I ain't doing that. I hate when it says two deliveries and it's, um, it's borderline good because I... For 5.6 miles, it's normally about $9 that I take for something like that. And so it wasn't even on, on target. So that was a no. So yeah, it, it, it cost me time and money to make these videos. So I, uh, I'm i just glad at least they're, they're paying me something. Like right now I'm getting about, oh, about $8. Every day I make about $8 making these videos. So you guys who think this is like a, a, a way to make millions of dollars. Right now, I'm only making $8 every day doing these videos. So it is not a huge a huge sum of money for the time that I'm putting into it. Because I'm putting in about two to three hours every day making these videos. <laughs> so what does that come out to? That comes out to less than $3 an hour is what I'm making for these videos right now. But you know, it's an investment. It's an investment. I have other businesses that I do, or I used to do, and it all started out like this too. And then years later, I was making tons of money, so. <laughs> all right, we got our next one, and it's Starbucks $6.06 .06 for 2.5 miles. It's gonna be the last one that we're going to do until I give the doggy her antibiotics. And this is the I think I've got to give her antibiotics all the way until Sunday. So today's Tuesday. So Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Six more. Is it six more? Yeah, six more days until we're done, I think. That doesn't sound right. Let's see. Tuesday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Yeah, it's six more days. <laughs> Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, why does that seem like a long time? six more days to go because i think we said sunday would be the last day because i recall that we wrote on the calendar is that this sunday would be the last day the dog would get antibiotics and then we'd be done with the with the 14 day regimen that the vet prescribed for antibiotics for the dog 
even though she's doing just fine, I guess with antibiotics, you have to complete the, the, the time no matter what, because it could cause whatever's going on in there to, be, to mutate and become stronger. They say that all the time for, for humans. They say you're supposed to, even if you feel better, finish your antibiotics. Although I know most of us don't because they make us nauseous. We're like, I'm done. They're throwing the trash. But it's supposedly if you don't finish it, whatever remnants of bacteria are left in your system will start to adapt. They won't be completely killed. And they'll adapt and become stronger. And then they'll, I guess they'll <clears throat> leave your body and go out into the environment or something. And that's why, that's why antibiotics have to be... Uh, um, strengthened over time is because of the misuse that people do with the antibiotics. It causes the mutation of the of the bacteria out into the into the world and makes more deadlier deadlier strains of bacteria. Science, <laughs> science is very weird. <laughs> and sometimes a lot of people are like, I don't know if I believe that. It's all a scam. And then you get into all the conspiracies and craziness. So. <laughs> anyway, I was just talking about my dog and the liquid and the antibiotics. I didn't want to go into that zone, <laughs> the controversial zone. But uh, yeah, so she'll be done on Sunday and that'll be all good to go. And then I can stop thinking about that and because that's extra, you know, I've got to always schedule. I got to work my schedule around that every day because, you know, I'm out every day and then she's got to have the antibiotics every day. So it definitely always has to be on my mind still, even though I'm not worried about her anymore. All right, we're pulling into Starbucks. We'll be going to a place called Lighthouse Academy, 1.3 miles from here. It's a four minute drive. And then we're gonna take care of the doggy. <laughs> and uh, everything was fine in there. There's some police officers in there just hanging out. That's always reassuring <laughs> for the safety of us all. <laughs> for our safety and security. <laughs> and uh, let's see, the, and the order wasn't ready. So I had to wait. So I sat in there a while and I saw somebody put a comment in my, um, on my channel or my video, my latest one that released this morning. And uh, people that always watch the first one, they like to just say first. So there's nothing to comment on because that's all they do. They just like to be happy that they're the first ones to comment on the video, <laughs> which I'm like, all right, whatever makes you happy. Let's see, oh, this is a meet at the door. Oh, and the, the business is now, is no longer called Lighthouse Academy. It's called Horizon Ridge Academy. <laughs> so that's where we're going to. So yeah, so that's been it for the comments. Um, some people put some comments yesterday. I don't have a, a screen capture of them, but people just like to comment, you know, how much they're just enjoying the videos. And then, uh, Let's see, was there one? I'm trying to think what was one that they had said something that was substantial other than that they like they like me. It's either like complimentary ones or they like my personality or they're just enjoying the video in general because they're pleasant to, to watch. Um, somebody was commenting something about which apps do you make better money on? Somebody said they thought that they made better money on Uber Eats is what they made better money on that the the tips were bigger on Uber Eats, but on DoorDash, the money overall was bigger, which I, I thought that comment was confusing. I was like, I don't understand what they're talking about. <laughs> I'm like, what do you mean that the, um, the tips are bigger, but the other one, the money is bigger. I don't really understand. 
I guess they're trying to say that DoorDash pays better, like, before the tip, I guess is what they're saying. I don't know. I'm, I guess that's what they were trying to say. I don't understand how that could be any significance because the, the amount of money you get before the tip is not significant for either app as far as I know, except maybe shopping. Maybe shopping, they might lock in greater amounts, but I think they both do that. So that way they ensure, because they know that they take such a long time to do those kinds of things, that that's probably why they do that. They both do it though. Well, we're here in the shopping area where this Horizon Ridge Academy is. I see it coming up here on the right. So I'll turn here into their 20 minute parking and we will uh, drop it off. All right, and here we are. Turning the car off every time I want to, uh, every time I get in the car and if I leave the car on, I get inside and I turn the car off. I need to stop doing that. It's wasting my battery. You can turn this car on and off all day long because it doesn't have a starter, but it does drain the, the, the 12 volt battery. You know that little battery in the, in the, um, under the hood? of the car. That's the one that all cars have. This car has a regular battery like that. I don't understand why, but for whatever reason, the technology of a, of a Toyota hybrid requires it. Uber Eats, $4.46, 12.5 miles, no. It requires that um, the traditional battery that a regular car would have. It must have to do with the fact that it's a hybrid but it has a regular engine. That's all I can think. That's all I can think of that is the reason why it would do that is that it has to, um, it has to use the regular battery to start initially the car, like it's a regular car with a regular combustion engine. And then once it does that, then it can toggle back and forth between the traditional engine and the the electric um, ability of the car, you know, the, you know, the big batteries, the big batteries that give it the power to drive on electric. So that's probably why. So without that, without that old fashioned battery, this car doesn't, can't start. It won't start up. So you have to have that, uh, that um, battery. But uh, because it's a traditional battery, you know, it only goes so long and it has to be replaced. I usually replace it, I think every every four or five years I have to replace that battery. So, and the other ones I have never replaced them, those are the expensive ones. You don't want to replace those. All right, well, I'll let you know when something good comes in. It's 7.54 a.m. The doggy got the antibiotics and we're on our way to Starbucks. Six dollars and seven cents for 2.8 miles. Here we go again. I started taking <laughs> started taking selfies of myself every day now, <laughs> and I I'm, I'm trying to get used to it. I feel kind of goofy. Everybody in the family's trying to be encouraging about it. They're like, "Oh yeah, that's cute. You look good," or whatever. I'm like, "Okay," <laughs> but uh, you know, you I, for all my previous videos, I've always just done you know screen captures of footage inside the the videos, you know, when I'm driving in the car. And that's always been, you know, very simple and I don't have to think about it. You know, I just do a, a screen capture of a scene and I'm, you know, I'm like right now, like I'm sitting in the car wearing the sunglasses and just driving and doing my thing. And I didn't even give it much thought about, you know, whether or not it was a good picture of myself or not a good picture of myself. So um, now, when I'm, now that I'm doing the selfies, you know, I don't have any sunglasses on, you know, I'm smiling to the camera or whatever. And so now it's a little bit, now I'm taking like 20 to 30 photos and then I have to pick 
which one is the is the least uh the least uh hideous <laughs> not necessarily hideous i know i don't look hideous but i'm just saying you know you have to be a lot more aware of the picture because it is so sharp <laughs> the picture comes out so sharp and i know there's like a beauty filter that you can use in the camera and i've used that in the past but it makes everything so so soft it's just too much i'm like this is too much this is too much lip gloss on the lens <laughs> so i don't like that so what i do is i just take the picture of myself and then in photoshop i'll customize the filter so it's just a little bit of softness to the complexion but not so much where i look like i'm i'm in some sort of uh some sort of uh, 1980s soap opera where you know where they blur everything so much that everybody looks like they have no pores on their skin it's like super exaggerated I don't want it to be that much so just a little touch just a little touch so you don't so you don't feel like you're landing on the surface of the moon <laughs> when you see my my thumbnail especially on some formats because some people watch this uh, these videos on their big screen TV and then they see that thumbnail and it is too, way too high definition for comfort way too high definition I don't know what the video looks like in uh, high definition on a big screen I don't think I've ever looked at it like that but I think in natural light and I'm driving around I don't think it shows as much detail as people think like it looks really sharp and crisp but I don't think it shows like down to like the the pores of a person's skin i don't think it's that that particularly clear oh that's cute there's a father and a daughter going into starbucks they're right out of a norman rockwell painting all right let's go in and get our stuff Alright, I got the stuff, but we don't have any internet, so I'm not 100% sure. Oh, it just came in. Five minutes away, 1.7 miles. We're going to go to Dry BQR. What the heck? Oh, Dry Bar. Okay, we know where that is. Alright, let's go get it. It's busy inside the Starbucks. There was a lot of people in there, and the bags were stacking up. There was like two other Starbucks bags there, I believe. And I just grabbed mine and went on my way and then you always have to check to make sure your bag does not have a a twofer something it'll say one of two two of two on the bag so whenever there's extra bags there you're always looking you're like wait a minute is am i taking more than one bag let me let me take a look see here and see if there's a, a number on this bag if it's because if it's just one bag they don't put any number it'll just be the name of the person but if there's two bags, they'll say one. Sometimes, I think the one time they just put the name twice. No, you know what would happen? One time they, they, they made a mistake. They, they, uh, they had the name of the person. And then the second bag had the name of the person, but with the initial at the end. And it was the exact same order duplicated twice. And so I looked on the, on the order and they had order, only ordered basically one bag full of stuff and I, I actually was like you know what I'm going to investigate this and I actually opened up one of the bags and sure enough it was a duplicate they were both exactly the same and I said oh hell I'm keeping one of these so I enjoyed one of them because it was a duplicate order because the the the, um, the order was it had two it had three items it was two drinks and a and a little tiny cookie 
And so I, I was like, I'm open with it. And, what, and sure enough, that one bag had the two drinks and the one cookie. And then the other one had the exact same thing. And I was 99.9% sure the other one, I didn't open the other one. I was 99.9% sure the other one had the same thing. And it did because I got the tip and there were no problems and no complaints. I gambled. But I was, I was like, there's no way this person got this many items when the app clearly says they only ordered three items and specifically what the items were would only fit, would perfectly fit in the bags. And they were both equally of the same weight, which really made it really weird. I was like, oh no, oh no, this was an error. And they didn't want to fess up to it at the Starbucks. And they just figured, well, let the person have it. I don't want to get in trouble. You know, the employee didn't want to get busted for making that kind of mistake. So they just set them on the shelf and passed the problem on to me, which turned into a benefit for me because then I went home and the family got to enjoy some some delicious coffee too. <laughs> so that was kind of fun. So, um, but yeah, I don't know what brought up that story. Oh, because of that, there were so many bags on the shelf. So anyway, so yeah, this one is just one little bag. It's light. Let me Let me tell you what they ordered just for laughs. They ordered one item. They ordered an Ice Cafe Americano Venti Signature Espresso Roast. Four shots. Dang. Ice with ice and water. With ice? It says ice, water. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if that means there's two drinks in there or not. I guess it's just one because it says one item. So anyway, so that's what they ordered. But uh, um, yeah, so you really have to watch out sometimes if you if the bags if there's multiples and then you check then of course you check into the um the app to see how many items they ordered and that will confirm to you whether or not you've got enough bags because sometimes there is a question mark sometimes you're like hmm you know this this order seems like an awful lot or it doesn't seem like enough and then you'll have to say something although most of the times you know at starbucks you just have to trust them if they set out a bag and that's the name and they say that's it you can't open the bag, so you just have to just go. You just gotta get it and go. And that's just the rule. With, with most, most places now, that's what they do. So with most places, the burden of having to check the order is not put upon the driver. Although if they don't get their stuff, you know you're still not gonna get the tip, the 100% of the tip. So that's just the way it is. Um, somebody sent a comment, I was at home, Let me let me, read that comment to you before I forget it's a new subscriber and they said new subscriber from East Coast Canada they put a little Canadian flag icon is that money earned for for you or the car I work some side jobs as an electrician um, my cash rate is 40 to 50 dollars an hour plus extra markup on materials and other and another extra wait an extra materials and another extra if I use my vehicle for any travel so obviously you know electricians can charge just about anything you know because they're in such demand and that's a very high level technical skill that a lot of people don't have so it's all supply and demand so this particular new subscriber is it a he or a she? I don't know. Let's see. What's their name? It says at at Biggle. I don't know. I can't tell. I can't tell if it's a man or a woman. But this particular, I don't want to be gender gender preferencing because <laughs> an electrician could very well be a woman. You know, most are men, but it could very well be a woman. So this particular person <laughs> can charge just about anything they want because of the, their their skill level. That, that skill is in high demand, obviously, and it requires a lot of training to have those type of skills. So yeah, I give them props. That's excellent. Good for them. You know, maybe I should have become an electrician. Uh, $5.47, 9.7 miles, no. I think everybody falls into whatever they fall into. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> whatever life circumstances happen to present yourself. Although in school, I've always been into art, so I always want to do anything art related. And I never really cared about money. So I'm not a real materialistic person. Where is this dry bar? Oh, there it is.
Hi, for Lindsay. Yes. Great. All right, thank you. Have a good day. Thank you. That delivery was pretty standard. The the customer that we were dropping off to, she was she was doing somebody's hair, I think, at the far end of the counter. So she didn't have time to uh, to for me to hand her the order, but she said it was for her. That was Uber Eats for nine dollars and something. It was like I think Walmart, and I said no. <laughs> so uh, so yeah, so we just dropped that off, and we were good to go. So now we're obviously we're waiting for something. We got we got Zilcho right now, and I'm cruising on back towards home as I usually do, as my routine dictates. So, uh, yeah, so, so far today's been okay. I mean, it's still early. It's only 8, 10 a.m. We obviously have about three hours and 20 minutes left in the shift. So we still got lots of time for stuff to occur. And I think we've only done three deliveries so far today, if I'm, if I'm correct in my assessment of the morning. So we've only just started and um, stuff has come in that's been borderline, like larger things to do, but the miles did not work out and the number of items did not work out. There were just too many. It was like a, some shopping ones that came in and the number of items was just ridiculous. It was like a Sprouts one, as I recall, and it was ridiculous. I'm like, there's no way. There's no way I'm gonna shop for that many items and it was not gonna pay off as far as the amount of time I was gonna have to spend even though the miles were right, the, the number of items was not. $5.06, uh, 14 miles, Uber Eats. Get out of here. Get out of here, I said. Walgreens is coming in from, um, from our friends at DoorDash. We're getting a Walgreens order. But we missed the opportunity because of the Wi-Fi. It's like, you missed the opportunity. So obviously it was there briefly. Uh, we got three deliveries for ten dollars from Walmart. No, we got another Starbucks, five dollars for two point three miles. Uh, we're on the road, so I guess that's acceptable. So I just have to turn it around here and hope that we have Wi-Fi for me to accept it. So fingers crossed. Okay, it's just spinning, so that means we may not get it. It's just spinning. I'm headed towards the Starbucks and we're coming up on a Wi-Fi spot here. As soon as I get near this light, it should kick it should kick in. Uh, Uber Eats, just, we got it. Uber Eats just sent in a, um, a uh, oh, Uber Eats is sending more crap in, $3 and something, we turn it off. You gotta really be quick on the draw for this job, let me tell you. It is a, it is a um, challenging job when the orders come flying in and the Wi-Fi is not stable. And then, of course, you know, there's also putting my life in jeopardy. <laughs> Don't forget that part. Uh, any moment, I could just completely crash and someone could just totally put me in the hospital. There's that other risk. But it's all well worth it, guys. <laughs> that $20 an hour is well worth it. <laughs> Oh God! I just think of, you have to really you have to really laugh sometimes at this job. It is just a co it's a comical job. It is a silly clown job that you do for fun. I mean, for me, for fun. I know there's people that do this job and they have to take it seriously. And I know that they have to do it because this is what they've chosen to do to make a living. Because you know the options were limited and circumstances and all that. But I'm just telling you guys my experience. I have to, I can't, I'm not judging other people because I know what it's like to struggle. I know. <laughs> and I know it ain't easy. But I'm just giving you my perspective. I'm giving my perspective from a, from, from a, a guy who used to be broke, dead ass broke. I'm not dead ass broke no more, but I ain't no millionaire. But I have enough now where I don't have to worry about how much money I make every day doing the DoorDash experience, <laughs> the delivery experience. But I enjoy it. I'll tell you guys that much. You can tell. You can tell in my videos. You know I'm having a good time. <laughs> I have a good time making these videos and I have a good time cruising along. And life is short. And as far as I can tell, I deserve it. I've earned it. I've put in a lot of... You guys don't even know the hard, the hard things I had to go through in life to get to this point. 
and it's almost over think about it guys it's almost over i am currently 55 years old it is almost over i got about 20 years good of good life left before i am gonna be so frail that i'm just gonna be just sitting in that chair and all i can do is go for a walk in the neighborhood and that's gonna be it and i'll go back home and take a nap because you know once the 70s hit And I will be deep into the 70s 20 years from now. 15 years from now, I'll be 70, 55, 65, 70. Isn't that terrifying? It is a a bone-chilling thought to think that I will be that age. And then they show these people that, you know, that are super healthy. And they're like, they're like, you know, you could be like me. You could be like me when I'm 70 and I look great. I'm like, that ain't going to be me. I can tell you that much. (laughs) That is, there is like almost a 0% chance I'm going to look that good when I turn 70. that was ready to go there was no waiting there's nothing better oh wait is my phone beeping oh my phone was not beeping so we're going now to the drop off it's a doctor's office and how far away is it (laughs) it's 1.3 miles five minutes away and it's a hand it to me so we get to go inside and hand it to somebody so i don't know if we've been to this doctor's office or not it's not a, uh, they don't, they just say the name of the doctor. They don't say it's like the name of a business. So I don't remember doctor's offices by the doctor's name. So that doesn't sound familiar to me at all. So I, maybe it's new. Maybe it's a new place. Although sometimes they'll put that and then it'll end up being like a, um, a uh, United Health or a, whatever the hell their places there are that are health companies, you know, like a, like a anthem or whatever so uh we'll find out together here in a minute i forgot we were talking about something i'm sure about me getting old i think it was but uh yeah oh yeah that's right my years are almost done so i just i have i am in i that's why i try to emphasize to you guys that i am semi-retired and so not to think of not to try to compare yourselves to me in these videos as if there's some kind of learning tool to do this job you go to the other channels for that go to those younger people that do these delivery videos they'll tell you all about how to make that money make that big cash work 16 hours a day and um, 24 hour shifts and uh, and get those platinum statuses on DoorDash and and uh oh no wait there's one older guy that does these videos i think he is platinum he he does it it's an older guy like in the in the south um oh you guys know who he is he's the one oh dash across america yeah he's the guy he he's he's older than me or maybe we're the same age i don't know i shouldn't say that i should say he's older than me because i don't know maybe he's 55 i shouldn't be i shouldn't be assuming his age but he works hard he works damn hard. I don't work that hard. So, uh, so yeah. But um, you can watch his videos too and learn how to make a lot of money. This, My videos are not going to show you the secrets to make a lot of money unless you're talking about investing. Then I can tell you some stuff about investing. And that's just, but it's all basic stuff. There's nothing, there's no, there's no um, secret to instant, secret to instant success with my advice it's all long term you have to start young you have to start like in your 20s and then you just have to save and you have to buy S&P 500 index stocks and you have to um, you know budget you know it's all long term hit nose to the grindstone advice and then if you live in a place like uh, California or New York or just someplace that's really hot in the market 
but you have to wait until the market for the real estate you have to wait for the market to plummet now's a terrible time to, to get the idea to do it um, the only thing that that you could possibly do right now that would be worth it is to rent out your your home I mean if you own your own home rent it out because it's worth a lot and then when it plummets then kick the people out and move back in but that's about it if you want to make extra money right now that's the only thing that's not too risky to do at this point all right well we're pulling in here let's see if i can find this uh this uh, particular doctor's office i think they said oh his name is in big letters here at the front that's awesome i had no idea some optometrist all right well let's park it Hi for Stephanie. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. You too. Thank you. We got our five dollars on that one and we're done. And we're waiting for the next one. Heading back towards home. It's backing the heck out of here. I'm trying to think what else you guys can learn from my videos. I mean they're just relaxing and entertaining. You just can sit back and enjoy the ride just hanging out with me. I guess if you've never lived in Vegas, they're fun to watch to see what it's like to live in Vegas. You know, the, the true reality of what the world of Vegas is. I try to tell, I used to try to tell the tourists when I used to, you know, do Ubering, drive people around. I used to tell the tourists all the time. I go, what you're seeing here on the strip is just here on the strip. I go, living here is just like anywhere else. It's just like suburbia. And I don't think they believe me. <laughs> I think maybe they thought that I had a detached reality of what real, like I didn't know what real suburbia was because I lived here <laughs> or because I told them I was from Southern California. They're like, oh, you know, he doesn't know what real suburbia is like, but you guys see it. You guys now that, you know, you watch the videos. If you're not from Vegas and you're watching these videos, you could see in the videos when we go places, this is regular people just doing their living their lives, doing their jobs. And the houses, you see the houses. We have we have some really fancy houses, but you can see for the most part a lot of the houses are just regular houses. Um, you can tell that they're all built to manage the heat. So most of the houses here have those kind of roofs, you know, the what's it called? The um, concrete tile roofs. So that that's that I think is unusual for the rest of the country because I think most other states they don't get as hot. I don't think any place except for the sun does it get this hot. So uh, most of the, most other places, the roof the roofing tiles are just those um, shingles. Uh, what are they called? Like not are they vinyl? Vinyl tile shingles? Is that what they're called? I forget. But they're not the kind of industrial strength tiles that you need and insulation you would need to live in this state. Although if you go to the poor parts of Henderson, you will see houses that have those um, vinyl tiles. I think they're called vinyl tiles. You know, they're real thin and flimsy and you put them on the roof and they're not the concrete industrial ones that are thick that you see. They're almost like, you know, the ones we have here, they look almost like Spanish tile roofs. But they're not made out of clay here, at least not not the majority of them. They're all made out of concrete because, you know, we got to have stuff to really insulate from the sun here because it gets so so darn hot. Um, but yeah, so you can learn you can learn from my videos about that. Um, I don't know much else you can learn from. There's not much else to learn in these videos they're not they're not the kind of video i mean i can tell you I, I think i did a video one time about multi-apping and how to multi-app and that was a real it's like a three minute video i think i i put i put out um but yeah i feel like most of the stuff that's out on youtube is there's enough out there to teach you guys anything you would need to know about um doing this job so there's no need for me to teach you guys very much about it. You know, I could, I think what I try to do is I try to, I try to show you guys the experience of what it's like to do this job. And uh, you can see it is absolutely a clown show. It's an absolute disaster. <laughs>
<laughs> you can tell the crazy things that I have to encounter to get this job for so little. That's what makes it funny. That's what really makes this job funny is the little tiny bit of money you get for these ridiculous things that you have to do that are not, that are not, um, that are not, uh, <laughs> they're not, they don't require a lot of brain power, but they require you to navigate through them uh, and in try to ensure you don't get in a situation where you end up uh, a, a total mess. You know, like, let's say, for example, you're new and you're like accepting any job and it's like five dollars for like 47 miles. You don't want to be doing that. You don't want to be racking up, you know, uh, essentially, what would that be for a regular car? 40, just even, even 25 miles, that would be a gallon of gas. So you're spending basically $5 of gas one way to earn $5. <laughs> so you're earning zero. And then you start earning negative money when you're leaving wherever you're at, because you're obviously out of your zone. And now you got to drive all the way back. So you're learning, so you're, so you're oh, you are learning about that from my, I tell you guys, don't take jobs that are upside down or not too many miles. So that's true. That is what you guys are learning. So there's something there, but that is about the experience. So, I'm, so you guys are learning the experience and how there are many pitfalls to doing this job, that there's lots of situations you can encounter that are either gonna tax you physically or drain you financially. And you have to really make the decision uh, you have to figure out for yourself what to accept. And then if you accidentally set, accept something wrong, you have to figure out before it's too late, before you actually say you've confirmed the pickup and it's in your car, that it's not a trap or a, you know, or a, ba a big mistake for you to do. Like when you walk into Sam's Club and you've accepted a shopping order and you see they, they're ordering 57 cases of water, that's when you need to say, I'm unassigning myself from this, from this job and I'm not doing it. Don't get to the point where you've actually put the water in the shopping cart, it's loaded in your car, and you've confirmed the pickup, and now suddenly you realize, wait a minute, this job is going to be too much for me. That is when you're doomed. <laughs> That's the part where you're like, oh, it's too late. I can't, I can't go back, and you don't want to be there. All right, we're headed off to... Uh coffee bean and tea leaf now and the time is currently 9.06 a.m. It has been pretty quiet over here and we finally got something worth our time so it's six dollars and nine cents for uh, 2.7 miles and uh, all the other offers that we've been getting have been pretty pretty bad so we haven't found anything worth taking so I was watching TikToks. I was laughing at this one girl. She she had a you probably have seen the TikTok that said it was a viral TikTok. She's cooking in her kitchen and the the pan catches on fire. So she has a grease fire in the frying pan and she panics and takes the frying pan the, on fire to the sink and puts water on it oh, and the flames just shoot up like crazy and then she panics and runs and th just throws the pan across the kitchen almost hits the little doggy on the floor and then just runs and runs away and then the, I think the fire went out at that point so that was making me laugh and um, I guess she didn't know about baking soda or just basically just putting a lid on top of it to put it out but but once the once the once you put water on it boy it exploded she was in big trouble once you put water on it Every, i thought everybody knew to never put water on a grease fire but i guess these young people nowadays and you would think with youtube and all the information out there they would know but even i knew they taught us that in school <laughs> i remember in, in junior high I took or middle school i took Home, I took the home economics or whatever, the, you know, the one where you get to cook and eat, eat food. <laughs> they taught us that. And um, yeah, so she didn't know. So she made a big old mess. And then they showed on 
TikTok. I don't know why I smell a burning smell. Maybe I'm getting a tumor. Like I smell something burning. <laughs> now that I now that I talked about that fire, now I smell something burning. Hopefully it's my not it's my imagination, and we're not gonna experience a um, new title for this video called "Uber Driver's Car Catches on Fire." <laughs> I do not want that title. So, um, so yeah, so I watched that one. And then there was a TikTok about a new ice cream at um, Costco. It looked delicious. It was like a biscotti cooked half. The, it was like an ice cream sandwich. And half of the, half of the, 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 of the ice cream was a um, biscotti uh, cookie. And the other half was like a regular like 50-50 bar. Is that what it is? A 50-50 bar? You know, it's like ice cream dipped in chocolate with little pieces of, of little crispy crunchies it looked really good so um so yeah oh we're in the district let me show you the district so we're here in the district and i don't know if we're gonna get parking close to the coffee bean or not it looks like we're not based on the number of cars that i see um let's see it looks like there's not any park there's a handicap one coming up i can't park there so i'm gonna have to go in the back the turn here if I could just jump out of the car and grab the coffee I would sometimes if there's no parking I'll park over here on the right in this red zone and throw my hazards on that's if I'm desperate but we're not desperate so I think there's gonna be some parking over here somewhere usually if I come over here there's a parking spot and sure enough tons of parking spots if I come over on this side the secret side all right let's go in The production that they have to go through to put these bags together is crazy. All the stuff that has to go inside and the stapling. And it must have taken her about five minutes. The food was ready, but it took her about five minutes to just assemble these bags. Okay, we're going four minutes from here. 1.3 miles. It's a leave at the door roll this car try to get out safely here I got a lot of blind spots right here and of course they're doing construction they're putting up a new rest a new Italian restaurant over here and they closed the other Italian restaurant it was called uh, Bella Vita they had good steak and, and salmon and it's gone so I guess this place is gonna replace it it's called North Italia and it's gonna have its own separate building over here see it <laughs> Can you see it? Coming soon. Flower Child. Healthy food for a happy world. And North Italia. And they're separate, they're separate structures. They're separate buildings. So two new restaurants are coming soon to the district. So I'm looking forward to sampling those restaurants because I have no doubt that'll be all the talk when they're ready to go. And we'll have to go down there and, and have a taste. Although a new, there used to be the Elephant Bar used to be here at the district and they got rid of it and they put some other place over here called, um, oh God, salt and vinegar, I don't know what it's called, something real common, like a real common thing um, and they, it's a steak place and it got ter it's gotten not good reviews um, from people and it's a, it's a very expensive place to go. And I have yet to I have yet to try it. I doubt I ever will. I doubt it. I I went to inside inside the Green Valley Ranch uh, Casino. There's Hanks, although Hanks is very expensive. The the steak is delicious. I've had I've had their steak at least I think three times since I've lived here, for whatever occasion. Um, if you want oh if you want a really good steak and lobster go to the M Resort. It's very reasonable. I mean, of course it's expensive, but it's reasonable for what you get. You get huge portions. You get a giant lobster tail 
and they come in different sizes and then of course you get steak and um, it's not crowded a lot of people don't know about it now I wish I could tell you the name of it because I can't remember what the name of it is but it's at the M Resort so if you ever have a hankering for a good steak and lobster that's the place I would recommend to go to and it's out of the way and quiet but it's beautiful you have a beautiful picture picture window view of the strip while you stuff your face with steak and lobster <laughs> and I only I've only been there one time but it was a great experience so that's the place I would recommend to go over anything here in the district over everything everything here in the district is is a trap for the locals to go to to get something to eat because it's nearby but for something that's truly like a Las Vegas experience and you don't want the crowds go to the M Resort because that that is that still gives you that sensation that you're on vacation and not just going down the street to get something to eat so that's the one I liked how I oh I was trying to figure how did I end up talking about restaurants it was that stupid sign that we had saw that got me on my thing I'm gonna switch topics because I forgot that I got comments from people on YouTube and before we arrive at our destination I was hoping to read read the comments the first one is from I think a, I think it's from somebody called let's say I like to say the name of the person now so oh I gotta turn I'm gonna watch I'm gonna run out of time Poker Gypsy 555. I can't read his whole comment. You can see it up here, but he's upset. He wants to know why am I not showing the money? How come I'm not showing the money anymore at the top? You know, as I'm moving along through the deliveries. And it really has to do with the fact that I only have so much time. And I and that was one of the huge time eaters uh, of my day, trying to calculate everything that I made throughout the day and make make uh, make the graphics um, for showing the dollar amount for every single one and, and totaling them and then positioning them on the timeline of the video and although I thought it was cool to do it it was adding an additional 30 minutes uh, to do the production now if a video is taking me two to three hours to do a half an hour savings of my time is significant so I decided that for the time I was spending on it, it was not worth it was not worth doing. Now who knows in the future if I'm making tons of money doing these darn videos and I don't have to um, worry about worry about it because I'm making so much money doing it. That's a whole different story. But I'm only making eight dollars every day making these damn videos. So who cares? So I'm like, you're not getting the earnings. That's all there is to it. <laughs> We're almost there. It's right. coming up here on the right. Let me see. It's not this house. It should be the next one. Yeah, it's this one right here. All right, let's go leave it at the door. Okay, that was delivered. We got another one coming in. Uh, it's seven dollars for 1.5 miles to go to McDonald's. I'm accepting it. That's a good one. Now, what's the best way for me to get there, navigation? My guess is to turn around. You got it. That's my best guess, too. Ooh, it's always nice when you get one right after the other one. That keeps the money coming in. Look at that. This, this one delivery is going to equal just about all the money I'm going to make for all the time I spent making the video for today. <laughs> Unbelievable. Well, I shouldn't really, I shouldn't really complain about the amount of money I'm getting for the videos because it's still early in the game and I don't need to make a lot of money on these videos. My guess is that I need to make about, oh, I need to get to about 40, maybe $50 a day for these videos. And then I'll feel like, okay, I'm making good money. I'm making it worth my time because at $20, as long as it equates to about $20 an hour to make these videos, and if the videos take me two to three hours to edit, and that's where the real time is being spent. I don't count, I don't count the filming of these videos as being the time that 
I am losing because I'm not. I am driving in the car, making money, doing deliveries. So right now, this is pro bono. I'm doing pro bono work right now filming, making the content. It's the editing that takes that is where I need to get paid because that's actually my own personal time or I am not making money and I'm not getting being able to spend time with my family. I have to sit my, my, my ass in that chair and edit for two to three hours so you guys can watch these videos. So that's where I'm like, I need to get paid. So right now that $8 ain't cutting it. All right, we're getting close to McDonald's. Let's, uh, let's park. got the order and it's going to require a pin and it's a meet at the door. I'm just trying to figure out where we're going. It looks like we're just going to go out on this way. <laughs> There's no point in telling you guys which way we're going. That doesn't, that's kind of an irrelevant point. But it's very relevant for me because I don't want to go the wrong way. Oh man, so they came out right away. And you see this McDonald's, they're st it's still under construction. The dining room is closed. And you press that little, there's like a little bell, you press it and then somebody comes out and usually you got a 50-50 chance, they'll come out and they'll actually have food in their hand and they'll just say, what's the number? Like, what's the password? And then they'll hand it to you. So that's what happened right now. They actually had the, the um, food in hand and they just came up, they came out, out of that door. And then once I gave them the, the, the secret password, they gave me the food. So this guy's paying a lot of money for his food. I'm really surprised. Must be in a generous mood because he's not far from the McDonald's. He's, based, he's less than a mile from this McDonald's and usually people that um, are this close they won't they won't pay you more than five dollars for a delivery this person's paying seven so maybe they're just really hungry <laughs> and they just they just want to make sure they get their food as fast as possible so they're they're paying a lot more is all i can think i'll turn on uh i'll open up the floodgates for doordash too right now because something else from mcdonald's may come in all right, I'm gonna turn up ahead here. Let's see, they see it. I'm ready. Oh, yep, something's coming in. Another McDonald's order's coming in, but it's only for four dollars, and it, but it's it's for 0.7 miles. I wonder if I should take it. Um, let me think about that for a minute. Mm, I say no. <laughs> I thought about it. No, <laughs> I do not want to do anything less than five dollars. Well, for whatever it is. I ain't gonna get out of my car for less than five dollars. It's funny how you, I just think about the denomination. You know, you just think about the five dollar bill. You're like, I wanna see a five dollar Abraham, is it Abraham Lincoln that's on the five dollar? I wanna see good old Abe in my, uh, <laughs> in my pocket. That's what I wanna see for getting out of my car. I don't wanna see a bunch, I don't wanna see four, four George Washington bills floating in my imagination. <laughs> it has to be a solid Abraham Lincoln. And that's all there is to it. <laughs> that's my thinking right now. I know it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't have to. <laughs> Logic is not a part of this job sometimes. It's, sometimes it's just about mood and feeling and just general satisfaction with whatever happens.
It's like if there were enough, if there were enough laughs and fun associated with having to do a job, an assignment, I'd do it for free. If it was truly fun, but there's actual effort involved. Okay, we're pulling up on the house, and I forgot to turn the camera around because I was too busy blabbing. But here we are. Oh, that's a pretty house too. Oh, you can't see it. All right, here we. The person didn't answer the door. We had no luck with the person answering the door, so I just set the food at the doorstep. So that was that. And now we're just making our way out of here. I'm sure they're gonna I'm sure there's a possibility that this was a tip bait situation. Actually, it's a high probability it was a tip bait situation. I hope I remember how I got over here. The only reason why I'm saying that is that the person did not respond to the phone call or to the text messaging. And of course, they put a pin. So the app for this particular order did give me the option to bypass the pin. So I bypassed it, but I also took a picture of the front of the house and the, um, and the, uh, and so that way they, I could, uh, if there's an issue, I can send them the uh, picture and let them know, hey, here's the picture showing I left it at the door. Oh, I hope I'm going the right way. <laughs> I think I might be turned around again. I think I am. I think I'm turned around. This does not look right at all. I'm going back. Uh, so it always happens when I'm chatting chatting up a storm and I don't know where the heck I'm going something's coming in from Uber Eats but it's for three dollars okay I'm following your instructions navigation yeah I think that was a tip bait <laughs> not only a tip bait but somebody possibly even looking for a free meal they had in their special instructions make sure that the nuggets are in there and the extra sauce <laughs> i'm like girl the bag is sealed there's nothing i could do and i don't see your instructions until i start the delivery so don't add to my stress yeah so that's not that was it i'm sure you guys in the comments will be like don't ever don't i think someone said that to me one time they're like don't ever bypass the pin because that means there's always been disputes there in the past and that's why Uber has put that there. But I know that if Uber really did not want me to bypass it, they could actually make it where I could not bypass that pin. Because I know I went to this really, this really run down apartment complex one time and the person wouldn't answer the door and I tried to bypass it and it wouldn't let me. It said, it said contact support. It was not gonna let me bypass the pin. So that told me right there, it's like, oh no, they've made it mandatory that the pin has to be put in or they're not getting that order because so many times the person has complained and said they didn't get their stuff. So this particular one, it did not. It just said, it gave me the option to just confirm that it's been delivered. So that's what I did. So, so there. Oh wait, hold on, we have to, they have to, I just realized we have to, we, we have to go through another comment before I forget. Oh, see, and this is, this, this gets, this is what gets complicated in the um, editing process. You know, when I finally have to go through an edit video, I have to find um, the, all the, you know, all of the things that I did screen captures of. Oh, I don't see it. I guess I did. I thought I had one more comment for you guys, but I don't see it. 
Maybe it's in, maybe it's, maybe there's a fresh one in here. Okay, here's a fresh one. It just came in. Let me screen capture it for you. I know you guys get excited for these uh, comments because you hope, you hope that the comment is, is your comment. You're like, maybe he's going to talk about my comment. It's like, maybe I will. So this one is from just another reseller, 351. He's a regular. He's talking about my car. So it's, a, it's about my car. He says, I know this is off subject, but did you get the updated map version on your car when you bought it? Ours is a 2019 Toyota Hybrid. Uh, Toyota Hybrid, but Toyota wants $189 for a year for their version of the map, and they don't do Google Maps. So that was his comment. So actually, that's more specifically related to, not to the video, but it's actually related to, off, which he did just say it was off topic, which we all have to agree that is an off topic question. So my particular car is, is the base model. I bought, I said I wanted nothing fancy in my car. I didn't want anything uh, extra. And that was just because I'm a cheapskate. So I basically just said, I, the only thing I care about is that car is fuel efficient and it has all the basic amenities that a basic car would have. You know, air conditioning, power windows, a radio. It did come with a CD player. So just the basics, you know, nothing, nothing extra. Cause I didn't want to pay for any extra things. I mean, it doesn't have any, it doesn't have like a cruise control sensor, you know, that senses if the cars are too close. It doesn't have any of that. It doesn't have the magic window, you know, side, side mirrors, you know, the ones that can sense your blind spot. If there's like a car suddenly on the side of you and you don't see it and it lights up, it doesn't have any of that. It has nothing. It is, as, it is the basic model. So I have no special navigation. I use my phone. And I think my phone is much better than anything that you would have built into the car. So I would just, I actually prefer that it doesn't have navigation. Now my other car has navigation and it's terrible. It is the worst navigation. I, in fact, I don't think I use it. I think if I'm ever in that car, I just use the Google Maps in my phone because it's not as good. Maybe the only thing that's better is the screen is bigger, but that's about it. And it's a luxury car. So that tells you right there. It's like, you can't ever go wrong with just using your phone. And I know that they're, they have the technology, the Apple CarPlay or whatever, you know, but none of those things are perfect. There's nothing better than just having your phone, just whipping that, whip that phone out and just use it and go to town. There's nothing better, I'm telling you. They have built these phones to perfection. They have done every, they have done everything to these phones now where, where it is your life support. You cannot live without your phone. It does it all and it does it almost to perfection. If you have a good phone, I know there's a lot of people that try to scrimp, scrimp and save and get a lesser phone. And I don't think I would ever do it. I always get, when it comes to the Android phones, I always get the, the Samsung and the, the, the top end model, but not, not the big phone, not the ultras, because I'm, my hands are not gigantic and I can't, I can't carry those giant phones in one hand. So mine is the stand, the smaller size or standard size Samsung phone. Cause it's just easier to manipulate and hold when you're doing work all day long. Even though I would appreciate a bigger screen, it's just not worth it. It's bad, it's bad, it causes strain on my fingers to carry such a large, heavy uh, phone. So yeah, don't, I don't scrimp and, I don't, I don't go cheap when it comes to my phone. I make sure that it's, it's, the, it's a good one. Although I do wait a long time before I upgrade. I wait until finally the phone is getting real buggy and then I'll finally upgrade. So that's usually about four years or five years before I'll finally get another phone because I am cheap when it comes to that. Okay, so the next one coming up is going to be a uh, Starbucks. It's going to be um, $8.25 for 3.7 miles. And I was, it's, the current time is 
It's getting hot. It's 88 degrees currently. Oof. And let's see. Oh, I know what I was going to tell you. I just realized so another person asked me a question about. Um, oh no, he suggested another, a topic. And I appreciate any new topics that you guys want to suggest I talk about because. You know, it helps me to come up with with uh, with stuff with content for the show. So, if you guys have any other ideas of things you want to ask me about that that aren't too personal, but things that are interesting, um, let me know, and I will peruse them. And then, if they're if they're uh, something I can talk about, I will uh, put it in the video. So. Um, you know, and I should I should uh, let you know who 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 uh, suggested these topics, but I think you can you can see it in the comments. So, um, and I can't remember the person that suggested the uh, the last one where they asked me they asked me how did why did I decide to move to Vegas? I can't remember the name of the the username of the person at the moment. It's just the name's escaping me. Um, but the same person asked me this the question this next question and it was um it was about being an extra in the movies because i was an extra in the movies so i guess i'm a i'm a movie star <laughs> not so um so but this was a long time ago and um I think it was in the it was definitely in the 1980s so this was before most of you were born <laughs> Or probably when, where some of you were probably uh, still uh, young, <laughs> depending on how old you are now. I never know who's watching or how old you people are. So I always just assume you guys are somewhere in the middle, probably somewhere between your 30s and your 50s, somewhere in that range for the most part. But at any rate, uh, the first the first movie I was in was called. Uh, Red Dawn, and that was some kind of movie about um, Russians invading the United States or something like that. I didn't have a big role; I was an extra. So my job was to walk with the crowd through the through like a carnival scene and um, pretend like you're enjoying yourself. So you just walk through and you eat the. I was eating, you know, I, I held some popcorn and you pretend like you're at a carnival. So, but you're not, you're in a studio set somewhere, somewhere in Hollywood, you're in a studio. And it's really boring. It's not the, being, a, being in a movie is not exciting, it's very boring. You spend a lot of time sitting around and it's usually weird hours. So we were there till probably about two or 3 a.m. And we were still just kids and we're just like, this is ridiculous. And they just, you're just sitting waiting for everything to be set up so that you can finally do your scene. And when your scene finally comes, you are so ready to get the hell out of there. It's not even funny. You are just bored out of your mind. So they finally tell you, now it's time to do it. So there you are. You're just walking through the crowd. And I don't know if they're filming me or not filming me. All I really remember was how terrible, terribly stale the popcorn was. It was horrible popcorn. It was cold and stale. It was not popcorn that you would ever want to eat. It was nasty. So, uh, oh, we're here at Starbucks. All right, I canceled the Starbucks order. We got something better. Here for Starbucks, it was a large order. It was 14 items. So I turned DoorDash on and I wanted to see if there was anything better that would come in that would be worth our time and something better did come in it was a uh, it was a um, oh we don't do we have not have any internet it was a uh, for sprouts and we we are just shopping we're shopping for looks like 17 items it says which is fine because they're paying us good money. Let me just tell you how much they're paying us. They're paying us uh, thirty dollars and four, four cents for five miles, but we have to shop for twenty-eight items. 
So everything works out good. It's greater than a dollar per item and the miles are excellent. So at any rate, let's head on over to Sprouts and start shopping. Wait, I forgot to show you the shopping list. I forgot we have the shopping list. <laughs> the sun's in my eyes. We're shopping for, let's just look for anything heavy or anything unusual or difficult. Because at Sprouts, it's all about how difficult is it to find the item. So, so far, nothing looks unusual. Every, the only thing hard will be the Atlantic, the Atlantic salmon portions. This will be the most difficult because we have to ask the butcher for help and they're always busy and it's hard to get their attention. So that's gonna be the most challenging. So we'll try to do that one first. All right, let's get over there. We really lucked out too because we're in the same shopping center as the Sprouts. So all I had to do for the offer is that once I accepted it, then I just had to press arrived at store because we're so close to the store. So it immediately made it so that we could arrive at the store while we were still inside of the Starbucks, which was excellent. So we didn't have to worry about being late, <laughs> being late to the store. So that worked out really good. And uh, yeah, and this will probably be our last one. It's 10.06 and this will probably take us to 11. And then of course, we're gonna probably be far away. We may do one more, maybe, but it'll, it's hard to know. It depends just how difficult it's gonna be shopping. And I never know, especially with Sprouts. It is really hard to, to estimate how long you're gonna be inside the store. I'm parking. I hope I'm parking in the right place. I don't see it. Oh, there's a cart return. Okay, let's go in. Yep, that's going to do it. Everything went just fine. Only thing that was missing was the paper towels. And they accepted a substitute, so everything was good. Oh, we just gotta get out of here without hurting anyone. What's the hardest part? The hardest part is not causing an accident in this job. All right. We are clear and we are rolling. We're gonna be going 13 minutes from here, 4.5 miles, and it's a leave at the door, thank goodness. And it's 10.38 right now, so it looks like we're gonna do another one after this. So apparently it was a wise decision that we, we did the switcheroo, that we, that we kicked out the Starbucks order and we took in this Sprouts order because we're gonna get 30 smackaroonies for our troubles. And the other one, even if it was a double order, we'd only gotten $16. So it was a better, it was a better of the two to get. I just hope I'm going the right way. Why do I feel like I'm going the wrong way? Oh, let's see, is the miles going up? Mm, let's see, what's it saying? No, I'm going the right way. I don't know why it wanted me to go the other way. I ain't gonna worry about it. And uh, let's see, I'm getting a lot more comments now in the, in, in, on my videos. I guess a lot of people now are getting real into them now that they're, they're back to me conversating again. 
because for for a while I made a few a, a few stinker videos that people didn't care for. <laughs> they didn't care for them because I wasn't talking as much and I was mostly just doing the job. I was picking up, dropping off, picking up, dropping off. And people really don't watch this channel for that reason. They like to watch it because they wanna they wanna like partially enjoy my conversation and also you know learn about you know learn about who I am. Speaking of which, I think we were talking about me being an extra in the movies, <laughs> which I totally just remembered right now. So I was in the movie Red Dawn in a carnival scene, and I never even saw Red Dawn. That's how much I didn't even care that I was an extra. It was an activity in school, and so one of the perks was, you know, did you want to do this? And I was, and you get, you know, it was a way to like, you know, just have an activity after school. So I was like, oh, okay. So I did that, and then um, I think later on in high school, I did I did a um, an episode of Solid Gold. <laughs> that was an old show that they would show music where music performers would sing live, well, technically supposedly live, <laughs> probably mostly pre-recorded, and they would just lip sync, but it was supposedly live, and uh, so that. So we'd be in the audience and then the performer would actually the performer would be standing there the whole time waiting for their cue to get started because they had to light them right. So they'd just be standing there and they'd conversate with us a little bit and all this stuff. So our our celebrity singer was Samantha Fox. So she's she was very famous at the time and I'm sure she's well known even today amongst you people who listen to rock and heavy metal. And uh, um, and sh and she was and she was good. It was a great performance, as I recall. And we enjoyed it. We were rocking out. We were having a good old time. We were young teenagers, so I remember that. And that was that was like being a, just an audience member. It wasn't really like an extra, but that was a part of the whole scene. And um, I think as I got older, I signed up to try to be an extra regularly, and I would get calls all the time if I was interested in going and I finally got a call to be in the Flintstones and I think I was sick that day and I didn't go <laughs> so I, w I got called to be an extra in the Flintstones but I was like I wasn't feeling well so I didn't go and then I decided just to give up on it because it was not fun I found it to be I found it to be a waste of my time so I didn't like you know I'm a very I'm a very uh, antsy person I like to always keep doing stuff and I cannot I cannot just sit around and wait for people to call upon me you know for that long I can't sit for that long a period of time in you know in some weird environment with strangers with nothing to do it is just too it's too grueling it's not it's not a pleasurable experience this is this kind of thing is just fine because you know I just go home and I hang out at home. I'm relaxing. I'm I'm in a, my own comfort comfort zone, so I've got no problem. But to be an extra, you have to like to be around strangers and make all this chit chat with them, and you actually have to have a passion for wanting to be in film. I didn't have none of that. I have no desires for fame at all or celebrity or any of that stuff. I'm a I'm a person. That likes to be invisible. That's why I thought the extra was good. I was enjoying the idea of just people watching. That's why when I had the opportunity to be a seat filler at the Academy Awards, I was, I told them I would rather just be in the bleachers outside, and they said okay. So and I wouldn't have to. I didn't have to get a tuxedo either, which I was really happy about because <laughs> I didn't want to wear a tuxedo. So I ended up just sitting outside in the in the stands, and I got to see the celebrities go by and it's what is really shocking about seeing celebrities in person is their stature you're always shocked how much taller they are in real life or how much shorter they are in real life that's what you're really surprised about when you meet them some of these women they're like statuesque models they are so tall like that um jennifer lopez she's pretty tall and so is that um what was that other one? What was the one that was in that show? Um, oh, I can't remember her name now. She was in that show where she had like superpowers and she was really strong. 
I don't know if it was called Angel or I can't remember now. But she she had a she had some movie success and she was really tall and, and the women are just so beautiful, boy. They make them up to perfection. You're like, wow, these are really pretty women. And uh, the guys, the guys are just themselves. They're, they look like they do on on the thing. They just some are real short. You're like, wow, that guy's much shorter than I thought. Like the guy from um, James Bond, um, you know, the the older looking one with the uh, with the really blue eyes. Uh, he's like an older looking gentleman. Uh, I can't remember. See, I'm not into celebrities, but he he was there and he was really really short, but super buffed, but really short. And then um, I went. I went the year that Jennifer Hudson won her 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 award for the first time for Dream Girls. So that was exciting. And I wish that then I wished I would have been inside of the theater because I would have liked to have seen that live when she had won. But at least I got to see her walk in, and I got to see the out what she was wearing. So that was pretty cool. And everyone's screaming. They're taking pictures. And so that that whole scene was exciting but to be an extra mm, no (laughs) it is not it's not interesting at all it is really boring and i guess your only your only thing that that makes it even slightly interesting is the idea that you might be forever on film and you could fast forward through a film on netflix or whatever and see yourself and that's about the only exciting part the actual making of it is terribly boring and uh, it makes it feels like you're just wasting your time doing it so anyway so that's it so i've answered that question and now we're moving on (laughs) got another comment that just came in and it's from mike j804 and this is in regards to my um comment about an article i read so he says i read the same article yesterday when you're a kid with no affection I would eat bread, cereal with sugar. And so he was just relating to me. So obviously he went through the same experience I did. Um, And the article was basically saying that children that didn't experience a lot of affection and attention do not um, end up becoming very independent people for that reason. And they did some kind of study that found that kids that go through that type of situation end up becoming uh, very independent people. And that's the kind of person that I am. I'm very independent. And I, and I never associated it with the lack of attention because that was my normal upbringing. I just thought, well, doesn't everybody experience, it, experience this? When I would watch shows like The Brady Bunch and Happy Days and father knows best I thought that was make-believe I didn't think people really lived that way I thought it was just for television I didn't know people actually all sat at a table and had a meal together (laughs) I didn't know the mom and the dad were always like at home with the kids you know and taking them to like little league and the the football games and you know be and taking the the girls to like their school play and their and their their dance recitals I thought, oh, well, that's just make-believe. They're doing this because they need to create something for the show. These things don't really happen in real life because I never saw any of those things happening. So uh, it wasn't until I was a little older. Oh, my gosh, the traffic to get into Anthem Country Club. Let me show you. Rude gang. I don't know. Can you see the, Can you see all that traffic? Oh, my God. We're, we're just at the light. And all those cars to the left, we have to get over there. And it is completely backed up. And it's the only way in to Anthem Country Club. Let me see if I can zoom out a little bit more so you can see it. Oh, we are so screwed. It says four minutes till we arrive. Um, That's not going to be true. We are far from four minutes to getting into this place. Oh, well, (laughs) gives us a chance to have a little chit chat while we wait. It'll turn. The, I'm sure this will turn the video into a three-hour video at this rate. If we're stuck, going to be stuck this long, we'll be gabbing away till kingdom come. All right, let me get my ID ready. So at least if I'm talking so much and I forget where I'm even at, at least my my ID will be at the ready to show the guard. 
so yeah as kids we didn't have any um anything that i saw on tv i thought was not real and then when i got a little older and i got to go to friends houses because i did have a best friend as a kid when i was like six and seven but his family was just as effed up as my family was so when i w would go over to his house he, it would just be his dad doped up on 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 drugs always laying in his waterbed in his underwear and he and him and i would just hang, hang out and, and play with the you know with the toys and and his mom was long gone i don't know what happened but his mom was not around and he he would cry sometimes about how he never sees his mom and he was jealous that i had my mom and uh his hair was always tangled and so my mom would brush his hair and get the tangles out because he was a disaster he was like a huckleberry finn and um he looked like huckleberry finn come to think of it and uh we would just hang out and play games and and uh you know and we were like the little rascals we were just like the little rascals we'd just be doing stuff and having a good old time and um, exploring and adventuring kind of like you would see in a huckleberry finn show so that to me when i saw huckleberry finn i thought that's that was real life not the stuff they showed on tv but that show tom sawyer and huckleberry finn to me i related much more to that world than i did to the fantasies that i would see of these perfect families having these having these healthy relationships in the house so anyway so um yeah once i got older and i saw other families that were like that although i didn't stay friends with them for very long because i think they realized that that you know that i was not like that i mean meaning birds of a feather flock together so because i was from i want to see if i can make this turn safely without blocking traffic mm, is it gonna be touch and go let's see am i gonna block traffic Ooh, nope i made it i'm in I'm not going to be the one honked at. <laughs> we're in. I mean, we're, we're at least we're in line now. We're in queue. We're not at the light. So we're still waiting. So, yeah, anytime I had friends that had healthy families, they would, they would kick us out. They basically tell their kids, stop hanging out with that kid. He's, he's going to be a bad influence. So I would never keep any friends I had that had normal family dynamics. That family would get... The, the, the smell of, of dysfunctional a dysfunctional family uh, in their house and they'd be like oh no this kid's gotta go you can't hang out with this kid he comes from he comes from the wrong side of the tracks <laughs> so I would I would lose those friends that had those kind of dynamics where they were more um, they're more traditional I should say <laughs> more traditional families so uh, so anyway so that's why, so I, I forgot why I even brought up this subject, but that's the, that's the essential reason why I am independent today. And I don't think I would. I think because as a child, I was always des hung hungry for somebody to be a role model for me, as I recall. Yeah, as I recall, that, that was, very, that was a, a, a desire I had. I wanted to have a father know, knows best situation to guide me and get me to where I would be, you know, be on the right track. So, but that never, that never, <laughs> that never happened. So eventually that's where it, your own mind realizes you've got to be your own captain of your own ship. That nobody else is going to, nobody else is coming to save you. So <laughs> you've got to save yourself. So uh, that's where the independent um, mind comes from it starts to develop internally i think i think the pressures of that situation causes you to develop your own parent inside of your mind at least for me and that's when i just i learned how to do my own cooking and cleaning and managing my finances and preparing myself for college and getting a career all that stuff because you know i was just i look around i'm like i'm not going to be stuck in no situation where I'm gonna be um, living like I'm living now. I'm not gonna, this is not gonna be a repeat. I'm not gonna be, become 
what I'm seeing. I'm going to become something, something that I want to be happy in, not in this situation. So, uh, so yeah, so that was essentially the article. And <laughs> to make a long story short, that was, that, that explained, that explained why I'm an independent person. Look, we're still stuck in line, and that's the end of that story. I have nothing else to contribute to that story. I wish I knew what happened to my friend when I was little, because we moved away, and so I lost track of what happened to him. And he came to visit me a few times, but we were just little kids. And I'm sure he's not he's either not alive anymore, or he's, he's, in, he's in dire straits or whatever. I don't know, because he, he was not like me. I was a very different, you know, obvious, I was a very oddball person so I'm not like the average person who goes through that situation oh man we're stuck and all the other cars are going through they're letting all the cars on the left go through but not me I'm like wait a second I want to go through too and he's letting all these cars just go oh man we were gotten the wrong lane gang hardcore we got in the wrong lane and now now I bet you we're in the wrong lane again Oh, I think their computer system's down. Oh, man. I think. They got a whole new set of guards. I don't recognize these guards at all. Oh, wow. This is going to be different. I don't recognize. They got new uniforms. Wow. They've got new uniforms. (laughs) I can't show you to them because I don't think that's appropriate. But, man. Let me get my ID ready. I'm next can't believe it (laughs) it's actually gonna happen we're gonna get in gang as this video extends into the three hour mark probably maybe even the four hour mark i wouldn't be surprised oh i thought i thought it was our turn but he's just checking their license plate i have to keep the window up because of all the exhaust fumes it's really all these cars around me are blowing off a lot of a lot of exhaust in everybody I'm sure their steaks and their salmon are going to be a little bit smelly because it's been a while. We've been stuck for quite a while trying to get in here. They gave us a a little slip of paper so that we can get in because I'm sure that these people are filthy rich and they're, they're, they're inside their own gated community. A gated, a guard gated community that has another gate. I always find that to be so strange. I'm like, why would you need to... Why would you need to be behind another gate when you already have a guard that keeps people from getting to your community? It's like you're basically you're basically letting everybody know. I don't want the rich people that live in my community to come into my area because I'm richer than than they are. That's what that's what it says when you have a uh, when you have a gate that locks people out of the other people that live in your neighborhood. (laughs) I think that's weird. I think it's very weird. It's like you're saying, you're saying that these people are the riffraff. You're saying, oh no, I'm not going to, I'm not letting riffraff, those, those millionaire riffraff into my area. I'm a multi-millionaire and they can't come in here. (laughs) Very, very strange. Oh, you're missing all the neighborhood. Why am I showing you me when you could be seeing all the beautiful trees and the foliage and everything else? It's like you've been looking at me for the last hour. (laughs) You don't need to see me anymore. I'm not changing. I'm just getting older by the second. That's the only thing you're you're seeing. You're watching me rapidly turn to 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 sawdust. But this is much, it's much prettier to see the, the nature. This, this is the one thing I like about this place. Is every time I come here, it's very relaxing to see the nature. To see the trees and the hills. And, the, and sometimes you'll see a, a, some type of wildlife. You'll see some kind of bird. Some kind of, some kind of fowl, as they call it. Do they call it fowl? <laughs> and um, I don't know if you'll see a coyote or anything like that. I don't think so. I, sometimes there's a turtle. Sometimes there'll be a turtle that you'll see on the side. So that's about it. I don't think there's tons of wildlife here. It's mostly coyotes, and they do have different types of birds. And I think that's it. I think that's all that they have here 
that is um, interesting. Um, they don't have like chickens or goats. I guess that would be like the Beverly Hillbillies. Oh, they, there's no gate. I wonder why he gave me a code. There's no gate at all. Let's see. Am I on the right street? Yeah, I'm on the right street. Okay, let's look for the number. Let's see if we can find the number. Oh, that's it right here. We're we're here. Oh shoot. I gotta get more over so nobody rear ends me. I should put my hazards on too. Alright, let's go in. We got our money. We got our 30 buckaroonies. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> oh my goodness. So it's 11.05. I don't think it's going to be enough time to do another one because it's going to take us at least 15, 20 minutes to get back home from where we're at. So, but I'll leave the app on. Maybe something big will come in. If we get something humongous, then we'll take it because, you know, we like big orders. We like money. But if nothing big comes in, if it's just the usual garbage, then we won't be accepting it. All right, so let's just keep rolling. And then it was weird that they gave me this slip of paper and it didn't do a damn thing. $6.12 Uber Eats, no. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Okay, I gotta drive 25 miles an hour. I gotta remember not to speed. These people get real upset. Sometimes they take out their um, their their little gun, not their guns that kill me, but you know their guns that check your speed. <laughs> Hold up my nose. I got a little bit of a runny nose from laughing so much in this car. <laughs> from um, all, all of our hysterics in this car. So yeah, I had um, I have a uh, sometimes if you drive too fast. There'll, there'll be people standing there with their with their speed guns. Is that what they're called? Or radar guns? And they'll they'll point them at you. And it doesn't affect me really anyway because it's really for residents. I guess what it does is it 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 takes a picture of their car. But come to think of it, I don't have a license plate on the front, so they're not going to get anything that's going to really identify me. That must just be psychological because I was reading I was reading about HOAs here in Vegas and apparently they can fine you um, for speeding like the guards here can fine you for doing anything if you're a resident but if you're not a resident they can't do anything because you're not you're not under their their rules in this area and it would it would have to be an actual an actual law enforcement agent that would have to cite you it cannot just be some you know I don't know if they're called rent-a-cops or not, but you know what I mean. It can't be some security guy who's just meant to protect the um, the uh, community here. 
but they are, they do have guns so in a sense they are they do have the ability to to shoot you <laughs> if you're doing something wrong but that's like any citizen here in vegas you know the the gun laws here are very lenient so if you're over 18 you can get a gun and then if your job if the, if the job says they need you to have a gun they'll give you a gun and how much training they get to use those guns you know it's not very much you know there's very little there's very little requirements that they have to do to to holster that gun in the state of Nevada because we're we're a, we're a wild west state <laughs> they are not going to let anybody stop them from their rights to have a gun in almost any situation except on a school property and you know on a school property you cannot bring a gun in even if you're registered you cannot bring that same thing like at the airport it's a totally totally different totally different situation than it would be uh here in nevada so but anyway we're out of there and come to think of it, I should have been filming the scenery again. Although the scenery isn't as pretty when you're leaving as it, as it is when you're going in. So you didn't miss much. You didn't miss much at all. So let's go and see if there's any more comments. Since they've been rapid fire today, we've gotten quite a few co uh, comments that have been going on. Maybe there's another one. Oh, there is. I think there might be two. Oh no, there's just one. There's one more that came in. Let me tell you who it's from. As a, as you all can all wonder if it's your um, if it's yours, you'll be like, oh my God, is he gonna read mine? <laughs> is he gonna read my 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 uh my comment? Oh shoot! <laughs> Bouncing around in the car, it makes it very difficult. The person's. Uh, comment I'm reading is KBM four two two nine nine. Unfortunately, it isn't a very long comment. It's good stuff. Keep up the good work, bro. <laughs> oh, I will. I will keep it. I will keep it going as long as you guys keep watching. The moment I, the moment my subscriber growth goes under a thousand. It's over. <laughs> I'm like, oh, that's it. It's like nobody likes it anymore. Three dollars and three cents. Uber Eats, no. Yeah, the moment it goes under a thousand, and they cut me off, and they're like, sorry, you're not meeting the metrics. I'm like, goodbye, because that means that I would have to do something else, and there ain't nothing else for me to do. <laughs> this is the show. This is the YouTube contribution. There is not much else I can contribute. I mean, what am I going to do? Am I going to hold up a product and be like, this thermos is excellent. I find that this thermos is perfect for drinking out of whenever I'm thirsty. I recommend this thermos. You can buy it on Amazon. Click on the link below. I'm not doing that kind of video every day. You know how saturated that market is? You can forget it. <laughs> I have no interest in doing product reviews or anything like that. So, no. <laughs> this is it. This is where, where the fun is. It's just, just making videos, just chit-chatting away and people enjoying the conversation for whatever happens. And so hopefully it continues to grow. I think it's a I think it's a niche or niche or whatever you want to call it. I think there's just a small sliver of the population that likes these kind of videos. I think it's people who are in this business of delivering and it's those people that just like to have company on when they are um, doing something else I mean I don't think very many of you are actually sitting here for all this time just staring at me <laughs> watching this video I don't think I don't think you could do that I think you would just get bored out of your skull you'd be like I need to do some vacuuming around the house or do my schoolwork or pay some bills or actually like like watch something on netflix you know laying in the bed watch some netflix while i listen to this guy tell me about how his day is going i mean you can't a hundred percent be watching this i mean <laughs> that doesn't seem right <laughs> i don't think it's that entertaining because i mean it 
it's entertaining as far as it being like a, a talk radio show. You know what I mean? Like, if this is like talk radio, it's perfect because, yeah, it keeps you company and you're just listening to whatever's happening and you, and you know I'm driving and you know that stuff could happen in any moment that could be interesting. You know, oh, my God, there's a shootout over here. Oh, there's a there's been a terrible car accident, everybody, and I'm my legs just got chopped off and I'm bleeding out. Goodbye. <laughs> you know, there's stuff that could happen. You know, to the anticipation, you know, stuff like, you know, exciting stuff, you know, like, oh my gosh, I'm out of chapstick. <laughs> or, you know, oh, I need to stop at the market. I just realized I don't have enough uh, milk at home. I need to get some milk before I go home. Stuff like that. So, so yeah, but I can't imagine anybody really sitting there and watching this the whole time. But people do notice stuff. Like, remember that I told you that one comment that that person was upset that he wasn't able to see how much money we've made um, throughout the video. So I, 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 I mean, I would like to bring it back. It's just it takes it takes time to do it. You know what I mean? It takes time. You have to add everything up, and you got to add it up as you go, and then you got to type it in. And you got to save each file. It takes time. And there's sometimes there's 10 or 15 deliveries. So that eats up a lot of the time I have. And then I'm already trying to improve the thumbnails for these videos. And that supposedly is more valuable than me adding up totals every time I have a delivery. Uber Eats, $8.08, 6.3 miles. No. Yeah. So I've got to prioritize. So, and then, uh, and then I did, I did agree finally although i it took me a while to get it through my thick skull five dollars 54 cents for three miles too low so i had to get through my thick skull that we were um it was worth it to have videos that were fresher so like this video today seven dollars six cents uber eats 5.3 miles no this video will appear two days from now so when you watch this two days will have passed so this so, so what you're seeing now I, I did two days ago when you're seeing it so that's fresh. That's considered fresh content. Uber Eats, ten dollars forty-six cents, twenty-two point three miles. No. So yeah, it's um, it's actually uh, I can see the value of it now because people are commenting more because they know the videos are fresh. They have a freshness to them, and they realize, hey, he just did this a couple of days ago. I was driving a couple of days ago, or you know what I mean, or whatever. I was, you know, I can remember what happened a couple of days ago. So there's a, that feeling of you're experiencing things more live. Six dollars, six cents, three point one miles. No, okay. I'm turning the app off because if we're too close to home now, and it's eleven fifteen, and there's not going to be enough time to um, do another delivery. So let me close that out. I closed out Uber Eats. I'm ending my dash. Dash has ended. Yay, yay, yay! It's over. All right. So this is the part where we're going to say goodbye. Oh, hold on a minute. I've got it. I've got to stop and restart the thing so I know where to insert the um, the, the earnings. All right, everybody, I'm back. <laughs> and this is the end of the show. <laughs> I have to, I had to make a separate clip because then I'll know where to perfectly insert and quickly insert the graphic that you now see above me and below me. <laughs> see, this is production stuff. That doesn't make sense, but it makes sense when you're doing the production. So take a look. This is how much money we made. I don't know what it is. I don't know how much it is. Oh, this guy almost rammed into me. <laughs> oh, man, this life is too much. Oh, there's that lady. I thought she died. There's a lady that always sits out in the sun, even when it's 120 over here by the nursing home. Or not nursing home, but the assisted living. And she's still alive. She bakes out in there, out there in the sun all the time. And she's still kicking. I thought she passed away. Well, good for her. I'm glad she's still around. Well, anyway, that's it for the show. So there's the earnings and the ratings and uh, everything else. So thank you so much for watching. We'll see you again on the next one. Take care and uh, bye for now. <laughs>